Welcome to Geocache Adventures with me, Shadow Dragon One, where I explore the world of geocaching. If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts or on the Geocache Adventures Facebook page. You can also follow Geo Adventures on Buy Me a Coffee for a behind the scenes look on every episode. That's one word G E O Adventures. It's free to follow, or you can become a member and unlock exclusive posts and information. Your memberships go a long way for helping support the podcast and are greatly appreciated. Hi everybody, Amy Shadow Dragon one here, and I'm going to talk to you today about MOGA 2022. We just recently went to MOGA in Clarksville, Illinois. It was spread out across three towns there, Martinsville, Marshall, and Casey, Illinois, all part of Clarksville. The theme was big things in a small town, and the reason for that thing, for that theme is because those three towns are small towns, but they hold world records for the world's largest different items. So Marshall has the world's largest gavel, Casey has a ton of world's largest items, including uh, the world's largest rocking chair, the world's largest birdcage and the world's largest pitchfork all things that we saw while we were there i went with my snuggle muggle hubby my kiddo who's seven right now he's geocached with me some and now has his own geocaching account so he was excited to log some of his own caches this time and my mom who has geocached with me a little bit she geocached with me A couple years ago, found a couple geocaches, and then she unfortunately had some back issues and had to have back surgery, but she's up and about again and came to MOGA with us this year, so super excited. She got to come. She wanted to come last year, but because of all the back issues, she had to stay home. So we road tripped to MOGA. While we were at MOGA, I did some recording there, talked to some other geocachers, kind of recorded some stuff of our experience, and you're going to hear those clips in this episode. I had a portable recorder with me, and it was the first time using this recorder, and most of the recording was done outside. So some of the audio is going to sound different, and there may be noise, a lot of background noise that I couldn't necessarily filter out because we were outside at MOGA and a lot going on there. So just keep that in mind as you listen. I think it's still a great episode and I think you will enjoy it. So a little bit about MOGA, if you're not familiar with it, it is a mega event. It goes on yearly. It changes locations, travels around the Midwest. MOGA stands for Midwest Open Geocaching Adventure. It was a lot of fun. We spent pretty much the entire weekend outside geocaching and enjoying the beautiful weather that we had. And I'm actually recording this a couple days after we got home from MOGA. And because I was outside the whole time and talking so much with people, uh, my voice just, my throat felt trash for a couple of days. So I'm still kind of recovering from that. So I'm sorry if this sounds scratchy at all for me. But I wanted to make sure to get this recorded while it was still all fresh in my mind. So I apologize if my throat sounds, if my voice sounds a little scratchier than normal. But back to MOGA. This was actually the 19th year that they had done MOGA. So this was the 19th MOGA, which is pretty awesome. Next year in 2023 will be the 20th MOGA. I'm hoping to be able to be there for that. But this MOGA was pretty awesome. So our story started out Friday, trying to leave to go to MOGA, and of course the best laid plans of mice and men never go correctly. We got a late start when we ended up having to switch vehicles from my SUV to my husband's truck because of a wheel bearing that was going out. So we got there a couple hours later Friday than I had hoped, so we did not make it to the opening Friday night opening celebration event we were just exhausted and hungry by the time we got to our hotel but we were there Saturday and Saturday was so much fun we got to go to Marshall Illinois and do the GPS adventure maze which was really awesome 
these don't happen a lot. I mean, they have its adventure mazes, they move around, but they're not at every single mega event. So it is one of the rarer cash icons that you can collect. Uh, the first one actually took place in Muncie, Indiana in 2007. It's actually not a maze. It it's kind of set up like a little winding corridor, but it's actually a mobile museum that talks about GPS technology and geocaching. So it talks about the history of navigation. It talks about how geocaching started. It talks a lot about geocaching, different geocaching types, different geocaching acronyms. There was a ton of information there. It was really neat to go see. Had a big turnout. We got there before the library opened. The GPS was being housed at the library in Marshall, Illinois. So we arrived before the library opened and there was already a group of people standing around outside waiting to get in. And there was a big line of people that came through after we did. And the neat thing about the GPS maze, not only the information that's in it, but it's open to the public. So they had certain times set aside for the MOGA event and just to be open to the geocaches to go through. But they had throughout the week, it was there and open and had different grade schools and students going through on field trips to learn about GPS and geocaching, which is pretty cool. So this first clip that I recorded at MOGA is me, my husband, my son, and my mom after we got done with the GPS maze and what their thoughts were on it. Okay, so we are at MOGA 2022. We just did the GPS in Marshall, Illinois. Mm. Bubby, what did you think of the GPS exhibit? I love it. You love it? Mm-hmm. Muggle hubby, what did you think about it? It was neat. It was neat. Mom, what did you think about it? I thought it was very interesting and it had a lot of information. I learned a lot of new things today. I apologize. I couldn't edit out my son belching when my mom was talking. Ah, seven-year-olds. Gotta love them. Anyways, here's more from MOGA. So after the adventure maze, we walked a block over to the courthouse to do the virtual and the letterbox. And we could not find the letterbox, even though it had been recently found. On the way back to the truck, we went by the library again and found out the cache that's outside the library that we did before the maze is now suddenly missing as well. So it appears we have the mystery of the muggled caches going on here at MOGA. If we hear any updates, we'll let you know. So a little more information on that library cache that went missing. We had just done it while we were waiting for the library to open to do the GPS maze exhibit. And then we walked over to the courthouse which was a block up and over, did the virtual, and we looked for that letterbox. The letterbox is part of the geo tour in the area, and those geo tour caches, caches, there's one there, and then there's some in Martinsville for the geo tour. I don't think Casey had any for the geo tour, but I'm not certain on that. But we did that library cache, and... There were people doing the library cache when we left to go get the virtual cache. And when we came back, there was people trying to find it that could not find it. The librarian was even out there trying to find it. And I stopped by because we had just found it. And I had talked to the the librarian earlier about it. And we could not find it. It had been a pretty simple right there cache when we did it. And we couldn't find it. And there was probably about five or six of us looking for it at that point. So I don't know what happened, but I kept an eye on it for the rest of the weekend and people were logging it. And I thought, well, I don't know if people are found it earlier and then they're logging it later online, which is always a possibility. So I checked it again recently and it's been found in the last few days since MOGA. So I called the library to find out what had happened and I told her I said I know this is going to sound like an odd question but I'm just wondering what happened with the library cache and the gal I had talked to she hadn't worked that weekend 
and didn't know exactly what had happened, but the cash is there in play. She said she rec- got the, she saw it this morning. It, it's the hint is by the book return. So I'm not spoiling anything saying that when she went to the book return to get the books out of it, she saw the geocache. So I don't know if they replaced it or they found the original turned back up and they got it back in place. I don't know, but it is there and people are logging it. She did tell me that they had 2,000 people just over the weekend go through checking out the GPS exhibit. So that tells you how big of a deal this was. And we'll have an update on that missing letterbox later on in the podcast. So keep listening for that. After we got done in Marshall, Illinois, we made the trek back to Martinsville, Illinois, and went to Moga Central. So here's a bit on that. And I should note that this was in the early afternoon before the closing ceremonies and all the competition results. Um, So there were some people hanging around. There were vendors hanging around. The, The main stuff at Moga Central happened later that evening. At this point in the day, most people were out doing... Um, adventure mazes, doing the power trail, doing um, adventure labs, all that other fun stuff that goes on around MOGA. It's windy out, but we are here in Martinsville and we're at MOGA Central, so we're going to go check it out. We got our registration picked up and now we're headed to see what vendors are here. See the Space Coast Geo Store. That's where we got our Bubby Signal last year. A lot of geo coins. Some cool stuff here. Wooden Nickel Geo Coins was also there at the event. They had all kinds of path tag holders. They had these amazing wooden, handcrafted wooden ammo boxes that actually latched and open and the outside had spots to display all these path tags. They were gorgeous. They were expensive, but they would have been well worth the craftsmanship if you had bought one. If you did buy one, if you happen to be at MOGA and you bought one or you bought one at a previous event, let me know. These things are gorgeous. I'd love to see um, how happy you are with your purchase if you had gotten one of these. So let me know. Awesome. <laughs> so here at Moger Central, and I have met fellow geocachers. Would you all like to say your name and where you're from? Sure. My name's Tempered One, and I'm from Southern Illinois. Purple Lady, Southern Illinois. Gracie Gross, Southern Illinois. Jennifer Wise. Um, St. Charles, Missouri. How are you? <laughs> are you all enjoying Moga so far? Yeah. So far. It's My first crazy. one. Your first one? That's yes. awesome. How long have you been geocaching? Uh, <laughs> officially since 2015. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. Yep. I love your, your earrings, little chihuahuas. That's my little baby girl. They're so cute. Thank you. They're so cute. Well, and, okay, so I know you listen to the podcast. Yeah. I will be listening. You will be listening. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the library, plug. Yep. Yes, shameless plug. Yes. I'm I sticking my fine. my geocaching she has card about in the it swag. Quite a bit. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Now I've got it, so now I will. Well, thank you. Thank you for looking into that. Thank you for listening. Yes. <laughs> and we've messaged before, so I, I'm so excited I, to meet you. I'm excited person, to. I'm so. excited to meet you. Yeah. It's awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of Mocha. Where Missouri are you from? I'm St. Charles, oh. actually. So yes. practically awesome. neighbors. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, I think I geeked out more there than anybody did. It was super exciting to meet some people that listen to the podcast and recognize the podcast. And I totally geeked out. And since I had never interviewed anybody or talked to anybody recorded live in the field like that before I was kind of at a loss as to what to even ask you gals so (laughs) yeah maybe not my best moment but it was so nice to meet all four of you thank you so much for letting me record and put you on the podcast I really appreciate it it was a lot of fun And here is some more from some other geocachers there at MOGA. And I have to 
thank my mom for coaching me a little bit as to uh, recording. Thanks, mom. Um, it didn't even occur to me as we were talking to get the recorder out and record because, like I said, I've never done this in the field before, so pretty new at it. So I'm glad she uh, urged me to pull it out and record this next conversation. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think you guys are going to like this. Okay. So can you tell me your geocaching name? Fishing Buds. And how long have you been geocaching? Since 2004. And you were just telling us about the MOGA. So can you tell us that story again? Because I thought that was so interesting. Well, we started... We started in 2008 or 9, I think, is when we first started. Uh, we've been to Nebraska, Texas, Ohio, Missouri several times. There was another uh, Iowa. one. Iowa. Iowa and Illinois. Mm -hmm. So we've been around a bit. So you said you've been to 12 MOGAs now? I think so. 10, 11 or 12, I'd have to count them. I'm not real sure. So what keeps you coming back every year? The people and just just the hunt. The hunt? Yeah. Do you do the competitions or do you just no. do the local stuff? No, we don't do the competitions. It's uh, generally, well, I'm 72 now, so <laughs> I've been over the hill a little bit. <laughs> I like to do them where if I have to stop, I can stop. Yeah. <laughs> can't blame you there. I can't. Is there any MOGA that stands out in your mind more than maybe any of the others? I, well, I think Nebraska because it snowed. We were there in shorts the first day and it snowed the second day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that was a mini blizzard. It did. There was a lot of snow. That's awesome. That was probably the most expensive one, too. Because... <laughs> You had to pay to park at the hotel. We stayed at the hotel in Nebraska. Oh. And that's when they first showed the movie that's out. Um, it's a geocaching movie. It took place in Hawaii, I think it was? No. Oh, that, um... It's, it's it, about a bunch of kids. About friends. Yeah, it's kind of like the Goonies, but a different mm -hmm. version. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't think of the name of it right now. I can't now. either, but uh, we saw it before it was out, and then I've seen the it on theater, TV yeah. since. That's awesome. So we had to have a private viewing. That was fun. Yeah, I don't think awesome. that was Nebraska, though. Wow. Yeah, it was. We had to drive to that theater. Yeah, but I don't think that was Nebraska. <laughs> oh, well. We've been to, it's hard to keep them all track, but... What's your geocaching name? Felicia. Felicia. No, it's, it's Felicia. equal. Felicia. Yeah, I'm, I'm equal, and I've been cashing since 2005 also. I got my mother into it. That's awesome. So you've been to all the events together? I think she went to one without me. Well, last year with yeah. Patty. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I, I still work. I'm not retired. I understand that. <laughs> I still work, too. I don't get to retire anytime soon. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for, for talking to me and being on the podcast and, and answering my questions. I really appreciate it. No, perfect. We've been wanting to meet you for a while. We've oh, been you? back and forth. Oh, well. Well, thank you. You're welcome. After I recorded that, I talked to them for a bit longer. And Casher Equal, he told me a story about something that happened when they were geocaching. And it got... It gets brought up again later in the podcast, so we will revisit that. Uh, it may blow your mind. It may not. Maybe it's happened to you. You've got to hang around to find out, or you just fast forward and try to figure out where that's at the podcast. Either way, I think you're going to like the story. So after the stop at Moga Central, we had some lunch and then explored the town a bit, did an adventure lab, saw a bunch of the big things, and headed to a cache at a covered bridge. So here's a little bit about all of that. And you do hear my kiddo adding to the commentary in this one. He really enjoyed being part of the recording. And also, I did look up the name of that movie, and the name of the movie was Finding Ohana. So we have been at Mogo all day exploring Marshall and Martinsville in Casey, Illinois. We saw a lot of the big things in Casey. A rocking chair, the big bookworm. And a 
pencil. And a pencil, yes. And we saw a weird spinny thing. A tap. Or you mean the barber pole. A yeah, the weird pole. spinny thing was the barber pole. <laughs> um, bird cage, the mailbox, the pitchfork, the baseball bat, a lot of cool big things. We tried to do a couple more letter boxes and they were missing as well. But we only found one. Yes. The one outside Moga Central was there. The other two we could not find in KC as well as we never found that one in Marshall. All three are supposed to be part of the local geo tour. So I have no idea what happened. Some other people seem to be having issues finding them as well. So we still it's still the case of the missing letter boxes and we have no clue. And someone went up to us and told them they opened up this black bag and they thought it was a jeep tag but it was a giant bag of ants. Yes, there was some kids running around and they said they found a trash bag that they thought was a geocache but it was full of ants, and, a, and the one kid claimed to get covered with ants, but I don't really know how any of that worked out. But we have been having fun doing some traditional caches. We did get the one letter box. On GPS is saying we're almost to another geocache at a covered ridge. We've done some virtual caches. And we're only two minutes away. Yes, I mean, we're, minute we're a minute away, away from that one, yes. And after this, we're going to go back to Moger Central, check out some more stuff. It's been, it's been a good day. We're having fun. Right, everybody? Yay! Pull my view The not quite as enthusiastic yay was Muggle Hubby, but we love him, and he's being a really good sport. So we're out here at the covered bridge finding geocaches and we found geocachers! Uh, so what are your guys' geocaching names? Okay, I'm Mike Simulator. And I'm Dial McDreams. And you guys said you came all the way from Florida. Tallahassee, yes. Florida. Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. So how many MOGAs have you been to before? This is our first your MOGA. first MOGA. What yeah. made you decide to drive all the way from Florida to go to MOGA? Well, yeah. I, I have relatives up here in Illinois. My mother oh, grew up in Illinois. Really? So we wanted to come up here and visit relatives as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. so we combined that, the trip. That's awesome. Yeah. How long of a drive was it for you guys? Oh, it was about Thir 12, 13 hours, hours is the hours. drive, but then, you know, we left on Tuesday and, you know, three days ago, you know, and we came up, you know, and visited people up in Illinois. So, you know, we didn't come just straight up here. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. You guys been enjoying MOGA? Oh, oh it's yeah. been fun, yeah. What has been your favorite part so far? I like uh, going through KC, all the, the the biggest things in the world there, which we has just been did so all fun. That. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, the adventure caches that they put out have just been, you know, a whole lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's a great way to tour uh -huh. areas. Are you guys going to the closing ceremony tonight? Well, we're, uh, we're thinking we're about it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We're thinking about it as well. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for talking to me, taking your time while you're out here caching. I really appreciate it. Oh, okay. Enjoy it. Thank you. So after the covered bridge, we went back to Mocha Central. I found Var of Harkin, Lee Katz, who has been on the podcast before. Uh, we talked to him for a bit. And Casher Equal shows back up with a bit more of that story. So you're going to hear this clip. And then I'm going to read the caching log you hear Equal talk about and get the rest of that story. Okay, we're back at Voga Central and I have finally found Vara Harkin who's been evading me all weekend. There's How you dragons. doing? I had to go see the dragons. We're doing that on the way home. Yes, you are. Uh, this is your first MOGA, right? This is my first MOGA. You've done Megas, but not MOGA, right? Do what? You've done other Megas, yes. but not Well, MOGA. I did a Giga oh, and you then did a this gig. MOGA. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's awesome. okay. It's same difference. Welcome back. Okay. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I found that one log I was talking about oh, with the gun. Did? Yeah, it's on um, old Cahokia Mounds. Uh -huh. And it was on 11 1 of 2008. Oh, if we're you want to look it up. look that up because a loaded gun while you're geocaching is definitely an interesting story. Yep. <laughs> oh, you found one? Mm -hmm. At Cahokia Mounds years ago. Do you still have it? No, no, I turned it into the police. Damn it. 
Yeah. I'm a concealed they, carry. They I can take it. it from I'm a concealed carry too, but this oh, is okay. 2008. Yeah. But you said it was. A, they tracked it back to a crime. Yeah, they tracked it back to a crime. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah you guys think it's a coke so, I don't so, know if you know what coke mountains is, but. So where were you on the night of the 15th? No. <laughs> you are now a suspect. <laughs> I think he got cleared after this. So Coke mountains near East St. Louis, just to give you an idea. Yeah. I know you definitely turn in bad guns there. Yeah, mm -hmm. in, in East St. Louis, that's where they all come from. We yep. just stay out of that area. Like. Yep. So anyway, yeah, June 11th. <laughs> June 11th. June 11th. June 11th. June 11th. June 11th. Yeah, yeah, Community event in Peoria. <sighs> where we're going to have the Central Illinois Geocachers Association down South Illinois, MIG, which is Middle Line I Geocachers, that's my group. And now, after talking with some people today, we may have a contingency of SLAGA from St. Louis St. coming. St. Louis Area yeah. Geocachers Association. So this will be a real celebration. Oh, June 11th. June 11th. Ah, Peoria. We'll see. I hope. We'll see. Well, technically, it's in Washington. <laughs> Washington. But it's outskirts of Peoria. <laughs> So I went through and I found Equal's post for that cash he was talking about with the gun that they found. So here is the full story per his post written on November 1st, 2008. We just finished logging the cache and was headed to Mound 34 for our third find. When about 20 feet away from the tree, my mother said, hey, here is a toy gun. I turned around to look as she was bending over to pick it up, and just as she touched it, I said to stop. It's a real pistol. It looked as if it had been in the field for quite a while. I used my sleeve of my jacket and picked it up and put it in my pocket. While we continued our hike to the next cache, I called the police to report and have an officer come and get the gun. Didn't want a kid to come across while hiking with their family. They told me an officer was on the way. We logged the next cache and continued on to the fourth of the day. Now I have been here twice before with limited daylight to log some of these caches after work. The Stockade Cache, Sweet 60, 65, and I hadn't had any luck on finding this one. While fishing in Sweet 60, stay to look for it. I walked to the parking lot to wait on the officer. Well, needless to say, Fishin located the cache while I was away. LOL. I could hear her laughing at me. They went on to log the other two caches that Sweet 60 and I have already found while I waited. Now, while I was waiting for the officer to appear, I watched a car drive up and park his car. Very shortly after that, the officer drove up. Now I placed the revolver on the fountain and was standing near the fire hydrant as to not have the weapon on me when he approached me. I explained to him how it was found. I told him that it appeared to have some bullets in the weapon, but appears that with the rust on the weapon, they would have not been able to be removed. He agreed, but then to both our surprise, the revolver spun. The officer removed the bullets and then checked the gun, and it appeared to be fully functional. Now, while all this was happening, I was watching the other person that drove up just before the officer. He had walked over to where Don't Bark Up the Wrong Tree was located and seemed to choose his next cache and started heading to where my family was heading to next. Well, the officer first told me that he really didn't need to see where the weapon was found since the weapon wasn't operational. Now that we found out it was, he said he should go and look for any possible bodies. So we walked back to the cash area. Once there, I showed him where the weapon was, and he stood to look around. I asked him after a few minutes if he still needed me to stick around or if I could go catch up with the family. I started off towards Cash Bertman's house, which was the next on the day. I got there just as they put the cash back in hiding, and the person I'd seen earlier was with them. Zeke320 is his GOID. We chatted for the walk back to the stockade, and since he was alone, we all decided to invite him to get the rest with us. We all had a great day and made a new geo friend that invited us to come and log his hidden caches near Centelia, Illinois. Now, isn't that a sensational find and story for a good day of geocaching? Believe it or not, it's all true. And as we heard in the clip earlier, that gun was tied to an actual crime so it's really great that he picked it up and turned it in and if you ever see a gun or some type of weapon or something suspicious while you're out caching please make sure you follow equals footsteps and contact the authorities now if you have found something like that 
out while caching. I would love to hear your story. So reach out and contact me. Maybe we can do an episode on it or even just share it in an email. I'd love to hear about your adventures. Shortly after talking to Vara Harkin in Equal Again, the closing ceremony for MOGA started. Now, at the closing ceremony, this was pretty cool. They had a drone fly over and take a big group picture of everybody, which was pretty awesome. At the closing ceremony, they announced the location for MOGA 2023, which will be the 20th MOGA. They did all the winners of the competitions, and they also did a bunch of raffle giveaways. So when you register for MOGA, you get raffle tickets as part of your registration, and you can toss the tickets into different bins for the raffle giveaways, which was pretty cool. My son really wanted this one trackable that they had. They had all kinds of things. They had MOGA t-shirts. They had different trackable geo coins, um, gift certificates from vendors, all kinds of cool stuff. There was this one. It was like a medal. It was a special edition medal uh, similar to the ones that they give the contestant winners that my son really, really wanted. So we threw a ton of tickets into this one tub. And we actually ended up winning two of them because they have multiples of each one. They tend to have, I think it was about four of each trackable and geo coin that they gave away. And we managed to win two of them. And I was super excited. And I screamed out when I realized it was my number that called. And I don't have audio of that, but it was a lot of fun. My son was so excited that we got that metal uh, geo coin that he wanted so bad and it was a lot of fun while we were there at the closing ceremony I got to meet Hellmeister from the geocaching with Hellmeister vlog and I got to talk to him a little bit so here's that clip so what do you want me to say okay so I'm here at MOGA with Hellmeister okay. hi <laughs> hi how are you, you uh, I'm good how are you I'm doing great you have an awesome blog on you there's kids running around playing hide and seek around us <laughs> You have an awesome blog on YouTube. No, thank you. When did you start doing that? Uh, 2017, right before Geo Woodstock. That was in uh, Waynesville, North Carolina that year. Okay. Yeah, I just started doing it and just uh, I wanted to give back to the geocaching community uh, in a different way than other my geocache hides. So I started doing that and uh, it's, been, it's been fun since then. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, how many MOGAs have you been to before? This is my second MOGA. Your second MOGA. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay. Kid just gave me some stuff to hold. <laughs> We're winging it here. <laughs> what was your first MOGA? First one was not too far from uh, this one um, in Shelbyville, Illinois. And that was nine years ago. Okay. And I haven't been back since. I've just been kind of busy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Life happens. Life happens. How have you been enjoying your MOGA experience? Yes, the weather was actually great. Um, it's oh, been it's kind beautiful. Of, it's been kind of cold lately, but not, not this weekend. And uh, the hospitality has been good in the, in the three neighboring towns that we've been uh, using as our different playground areas. And yeah. it's been good. A new geo tour to kick off with and, and all sorts of good caches as well. Did you run into any issues with the geo tour caches? Um, issues? No, I didn't really run any issues, no. We tried to do some of the Geo Tour caches today, and we couldn't find three of them. They just didn't seem to be there. Yeah, that means a couple of them were kind of tricky in the way that the letterbox told you to go th one block north and then turn here and so on and so forth, and uh. in letterbox fashion. Um, so, yeah, a couple of them are kind of tricky. We might have missed something from the description. Because we've been trying to solve the mystery of the missing caches. Yeah. You probably did. That's probably, we probably just screwed it up. Yeah. Mystery solved. <laughs> That's okay. It happens. Thank you for helping us solve the mystery. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for talking with me and for being on the podcast. And we'll have to have you on for a long format interview sometime. Awesome. Be I great. can't wait. I can't thank wait. Thank you. So as it turned out, I did go back and look at the cast description for those geocaches that we couldn't find that were part of the geo tour and sure enough I made a very rookie mistake of not reading the full description and it turned out that there were instructions to go someplace else to find the actual cache location 
I haven't done that many letterbox caches, and the few that I have done, I hadn't actually seen the cache description have that in it before. So, rookie mistake, read the cache description fully before you go try to find the geocache, because sometimes there's really important information in there. So, the mystery of the missing caches was solved. Turns out they weren't missing after all. I just messed up how to do them. But then again, I never claimed to be an expert or even claim to be good at this geocaching thing. I just really enjoy it. So after the closing ceremony and everything had wrapped up, I got to sit down with the host of MOGA and talk to him and find out more about MOGA and some of the behind the scenes stuff and what we can maybe expect a little bit next year at MOGA 2023. And that is this next clip. Okay, so we're here. Moga just wrapped up, and I am with Jesse. Your caching name is? King AFK. King AFK. And you hosted, correct? Yeah, I was the Moga. director, yeah. You were the director, and you were last year as well for 2021, correct? Uh, yep. So, how long have you been helping with Moga like this? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I started caching in... 2013, mid 2013, I attended uh, my first MOGA in 2014. Okay. Um, about eight to nine months after I started. Um, and then uh, I was so excited about it. I knew that I wanted to get involved with that group. I put in a bid to host MOGA. Um, there's a committee that reviewed the bid. Um, there was a bunch of bids. I, I was. I won. It was uh, in 2016. I hosted MOGA in Cincinnati. Um, had a huge turnout. Wonderful experience. Fell in love with doing large events. And uh, it's what we've done ever since. I hosted Geo Woodstock Giga Events Cincinnati in 2018. Wow. Um, the only Giga in the U.S. Um, I helped with uh, the Kansas one a little bit. I've helped with other mega events all around the world. Um, in, 2000, uh, in 2021, um, we took over MOGA events. And so um, we're now hosting and bidding it out. And I hosted last year. I um, hosted this year. And now we are selecting to co-host with someone next year. And next year, we found out, it's going to be in Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan, Michigan. yes. I went up there and toured. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be a great time. Is it going to be awesome? We had a blast. That's awesome. Do they have a theme selected for it yet, or is that um, still something we can't talk about The event about hasn't yet? published, so we're not talking about the okay. theme being Hot Rods. Okay, we won't talk about it being Hot Rods. No, nope, We nope. can't talk about Hot Rods. Not at all. <laughs> um, it's going to be awesome. It I sounds mean, awesome. So that's where General Motors started in Chevy, and this whole like, Hot Rod movement comes out of mm -hmm. there. and it's, it's just a really cool experience they have there. That's awesome. So... The big thing about MOGA is the competitions. Correct? Well, MOGA I mean, was birthed, you know, next year's the 20th anniversary. Yeah. And um, the classic activity at MOGA is the competitions, the individual and the team. And I encourage everyone that is competitive at heart <laughs> and non competitive at heart to go out and try the individual. It is one of the best experiences that most people I know as geocachers that don't even like to compete has gone out and tried it and said it was awesome so um, I encourage everyone to come check that out um, but you know as MOGA has grown I mean it started as this tiny little there was a little event held in Texas one year that inspired it and the founder of um, MOGA uh, Bronny Bear was there he was doing orienteering with a side of geocaching um, a guy named Webling, the geocaching names, uh, was putting on the Texas event. And Brownie Bear goes back to St. Louis and he's like, man, that was cool. I got to do that next year. So the MOGA was birthed. Okay. Well, eventually Webling moved to Cincinnati. Him and I became good friends. Okay. And, you know, it's been going on. I mean, it's like the 10th anniversary of it, 10th or 11th anniversary of MOGA. And 2014, 
Um, it goes to Athens, Ohio. And Rich and I, Rich uh, Webling, didn't even realize he inspired it. And, uh, you know, uh, the whole C- Cincinnati area club's there. And we're hanging out and enjoying the event. The closing ceremony, uh, Bronny Bear, Mike Griffin, gets up and he's talking about the history of MOGA. It's unfortunately something I didn't cover tonight because it's really cool. But uh, it's... He talked about how he went to this event in Texas and a guy put on this event and the, his name is Webling and Rich is just like, wait, what? That was me. <laughs> and, you know, he didn't know at the time. And so um, from that, we got excited. That's why I put in a bid to host and we won bid in 2016. Rich Wendling, Webling um, was my course designer. And that's just why I fell in love with it. It's the whole, it's, it's fun. It's family. It's friendly. And it takes you some, to some cool things. It does. Uh, you know, I've hosted a geo Woodstock. I've, I've been to a ton of megas. Yeah. Um, and they're all unique, but MOGA is different in the sense that, uh, you know, most megas, like people come together and they're in one spot. They may migrate, you know, uh, do a road rally, do an activity, and then it's over. Mocha kind of feels odd when you first come because, you know, we have an, we call what is event central, and it's dead most of the day. Yeah. Because people are out doing activities, pre planned activities, you know, and for this year, literally all over our county. I mean, it could be 10, 20 minute drive in any direction, and there's activities going on. There was. So we had so. the GPS maze. Yes. There was all, there was, Adventure Labs all over, some published for the event, Yeah. the competitions, there was Snag well, there the was Tag. an individual, a two-person team, a four-person team, and a puzzle competition. So then, and then the Snag the Tag. Um, what am I missing? Because The and there's, Poker oh, Run. The Poker Run, yes. The, the Event run. Mystery, which we build in a giant mu- puzzle to the entire event every year. It just leads people through a storyline. That's pretty cool. Um, there was the photo contest that started last year. This was the second year yeah. for it. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. It's Yes, it's I, the sweepstakes giveaway. I mean, we got tons of stuff to give away just The giveaways were awesome. Uh, I shriek excitedly when we won one. Oh, did you win? <laughs> yeah. I remember you winning. Yeah, that was, it was that uh, champion... Medallion. The, that's the award medal and yeah. a custom version for that. Yeah. Yeah, my son wanted that real bad, so we threw a ton of tickets in, which is how we ended up with two of them. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was like, man, she must have wanted that. You did. He wanted it real bad. There was a bad. lot of tickets in there, too. <laughs> he wanted it real bad, and we had a lot of tickets, so we threw most of them <laughs> in that box. <laughs> that's awesome. But, I think I <laughs> so, so it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you from me and my family loved it. Thank you for being a part of this and helping this go on. And I think everybody here would say thank you for helping making sure this keeps going on. And I'm looking forward to next year. I'm just going to go ahead and address this awkward transition right here. I cut out a portion of the clip where Jesse's nephew really cute really sweet kid who'd been running around moga all day he was really interested in my recorder he he talked a little bit but i ended up cutting him out only because he is a minor and i did not have his parents consent to put him in the podcast so i didn't feel comfortable leaving him in there as a parent myself i'd want to be able to consent to my kid being on something like that. So since I didn't have his parents' consent, I didn't know exactly who his parents were, and everything was wrapping up at that point, I didn't have their consent, so I took him out of the podcast. Because of that edit, it made for a really awkward transition in the clip. So instead of leaving that in there and just trying to pretend it was all good, I decided I'd just address it and tell you what was going on right now. So here's the rest of the clip. This has been real exciting. And we had a blast. Thank you for sitting down and talking to me about no, this. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure because if we can bring more families together and more communities together and raise awareness about this wonderful... I mean, there's a guy here that uh, had heart complications at like 
34 years old and now he's using geocaching to make people healthy. I, I've met a dozen families that their families got better because of geocaching and going and competing. I'm like, that's what it's about. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, pancake breakfast tomorrow morning. What time? Uh, it's on the event. I think 7:30. I'll do an Z announcement. Zimbal's brain dead, and I can't tell him the answers. I think it's 7:30. I'll make an announcement on the event. I have to look at the listing. Because he's going to go and crash at the hotel. I have to get something to eat. I'm no. going to pack up the soup what I can, and I'm going to pack up. Plug this up. I got to charge it. Thank you. <laughs> I got Sorry, Amy. All good. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out of here. <laughs> You're real good. You want to say something for the podcast? Ryan Simmels, you got my son addicted to path tags today at MOGA. <laughs> path tags are great. Path tags are great. Path tags are great. Now he's a little path tag monster at age seven. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now you're going to have to get a Flex. holder for him all. Uh, so my mom bought him a small holder for his birthday. He has to wait till his birthday. But I think he already got more path tags than that holder is going to hold now. So. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It was good to see you, meet you in person. It's always been on Facebook. Can you please contact Bob? Yeah. To see what to do to the garbage. Because I have no idea, and I don't want to leave it and be like, you take care of it when there's a place to put it, you know. These yeah. are the hard things of events It'll to have to wrap tomorrow up. tomorrow because it's too late tonight. And yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Sunday tomorrow, though. Probably has church. I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's too late tonight. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to do with our, our stuff? I will get back with you in a minute on that. Okay. Thank My you. My feet are killing me, and I really want to leave. Well, let's squat. That's not going to help. They okay. need, like, a rub and a hot shower. And... <laughs> I'm sorry I'm keeping a mirror. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, we're recording. <laughs> It'll edit. It's okay. <laughs> so now that's all on recording. It's okay. I'm his wife. I'm alone interrupting. <laughs> You're not it. my wife. I love it. <laughs> Look in there. It's okay. We're co-directors, you know. I, yeah. I, I do a lot of the manual labor. Yeah. It's like the brains. And I do a lot of the design work and, you know. Develop, Actually, all the design is her. Swag. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I never saw so she Are you like a graphics the... designer? Yes. Or... Oh, that's awesome. I'm a graphics technician. That's awesome. Yep. So. I love it. Right, that's fun. great. <laughs> Actually, all the designs you see on our stuff is typically her. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Hey. <laughs> magic behind Mocha. Wow. There's so much magic, it's insane. <laughs> Good job. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you so much for this. And I would love to... I Next year is 20th, so that's going to be a major fun, thing. Fun, yeah. So... Next spring, I would love to talk with somebody before MOGA 20th gets underway ahead of the event. Maybe we can spread a little awareness of the event. And yeah. Definitely maybe get a little glimpse of what's coming for 2023. Yeah, no doubt. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I got a giggle out of that last half. I hope you did too. I left it, the whole thing in there because I thought it was entertaining. I hope you will too. I had so much fun at MOGA. My family had fun at MOGA. Even my muggle hubby had a good time at MOGA exploring the area and getting to see all the sites. It's a really great event. Individuals, families, all of it's fun for everybody. I recommend going to it. I really am hoping to do a sort of a long format episode on MOGA and its history before the 20th anniversary event happens. Keep watch for that next season. That wraps up this episode on MOGA 2022. It was a very different kind of format uh, than what I typically get to do. Recording in the field was so much fun. I really enjoyed putting this podcast together. So I hope you enjoy this episode. And as always, thank you so much to Everybody who was on the podcast, if you're listening to this, thank you so much for letting me record you at MOGA. And to everybody listening, thank you so much for choosing to listen to this podcast. It really does mean a lot to me that you would take your time to listen to this podcast without you listeners. There's no point in doing this. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for listening to Geocache Adventures. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have you heard of FTF Magazine? It's the magazine for geocachers, filled with articles and snippets sent in by geocachers just like you. I'm a subscriber myself, and I love it. Check them out today 
at ftfgo.com and tell them Shadow Dragon 1 sent you. Would you like to be a guest on a show or have a topic you'd like to hear covered? Reach out and let me know. Just go to the geocacheadventures.org website and click on the contact page to reach out.